Guys, there's a crazy story going around about a blockchain developer who lost $20 million while they were trying to attack another user on chain by none other than an Ethereum validator who is responsible for running the network. This is an absolutely insane story. You don't want to miss this because everybody's talking about it. And a lot of people are wondering like, hey, is the blockchain even safe to use? And many people are scratching their heads confused about why is this a big deal in the first place and can't really understand exactly what happened or why it's such a big deal. But I want to clarify everything in this video today, break it down into really simple terms so that you can understand it, you know, as a blockchain developer myself who works this technology on a daily basis. So if you're new around here, hey, I'm Gregory, and on this channel, I turn you into a blockchain master. So if that's something that you're interested in, then smash that like button down below for the YouTube algorithm and subscribe to this channel. And if you want to become a blockchain master, step by step, start to finish, break into the blockchain industry, increase your salary well past 100K. I've helped lots of people do exactly that, and I can show you too over at dappdiversity.com forward slash bootcamp. All right, so let's jump into this. Let's talk about this crazy story about how this developer lost $20 million instantly trying to attack another user on chain. So the quick TLDR on this, if you already understand everything that's happening, there was an MEV bot out there that was trying to do a sandwich attack and a validator who's responsible for running the network actually tricked this user and caused their attack to fail, resulting in a $20 million loss. And the funds from this are still sitting on chain. And so there's a lot of vocabulary words and concepts in there that you may not understand. And if you, if you understand these terminology, you may not actually connect the dots onto exactly how this happened or why it's important. So I want to break it down right now. All right, so first of all, let's talk about my minor extractable value or maximal extractable value and what that is in the first place, okay? So that really requires you to understand how the transactions work on the Ethereum blockchain in the first place. So essentially, let's say that you're trying to do a transaction, like I'm gonna send cryptocurrency from my account to yours. So when you submit that transaction to the blockchain with your MetaMask, it goes into a place called the mempool, okay? And that everybody's transactions goes here before it gets included into a block and put on chain. And while it's in the mempool, other people can look to see what's inside the mempool and then try to submit transactions that could affect the transaction that you're trying to do. And so that's where a sandwich attack comes into play. So a sandwich attack happens when someone is trying to swap cryptocurrency on a decentralized exchange like Uniswap, for example. So let's say that I was going to go buy a token on Uniswap for like $1. Well, an attacker could look at my transaction on the blockchain and submit their transaction that says, hey, buy this token before they do. And that's actually going to push the price up of the token a little bit. And then my transaction is going to go through, which is going to do the purchase and push the price up a little more. And then after my transactions goes through, they can submit another transaction, the exact same block to sell the token. And their result is a small profit. And my result is a small loss because I don't get quite as many tokens back from the swap that I intended to. And so that's why this is called a sandwich attack because basically I'm putting my original transaction here and they're putting one transaction before me and one transaction after me. So if you've ever heard of front running, this is front running, but also back running. So you're doing a transaction before and after, front running, back running, hence a sandwich attack. And you might wonder, how could you order the transactions like this? Well, you do it by paying a priority fee that's higher than the one that I'm doing to get my transaction included to a block because the people who run the network ultimately want to make money and they're going to process transactions that are more expensive first. And so who exactly is responsible for doing that? Well, it's the validators who run the network. So validators are people who run the computers that make up the blockchain. So those computers are called nodes. Again, a blockchain is just a peer-to-peer -peer network of computers or nodes that all talk to one another that make up this worldwide computer. They're responsible for like running the decentralized applications like a DEX, for example, okay? So the validators, what they do is they lock up their cryptocurrency, they stake it in order to, you know, validate these transactions. And they also have insight and access to the mempool to order these transactions based on priority. And they are a really important part of what happened in this scenario. All right, so now we cover what the life cycle of a transaction is, how it goes into the mempool before it's included into a block. Okay, who's responsible, what the user does, you know, uh, what the validator does. Yeah, I will also explain the MEV bot. That's the person who's like doing this sandwich attack here. Uh, with also access to the mempool based on the user transaction. So there's three people, the user, the MEV bot, and the validator. And now in most cases, this is just some random user who's trying to buy on an exchange, and the MEV bot's the person who does the front running or sandwich attack or whatever, and then the validator is the person who's responsible for getting this extra fee and including the transaction on chain. And in most cases, it's three different people. But now let's talk about this crazy scenario where this MEV bot right here tried to do this and lost $20 million. So this is the first time I've seen anything like this happen. And one reason this MEV bot was so unsuspecting is because these were not three distinct people in the situation. Most of the time it is. Most of the time, like I was saying, this is some random user on chain. 
and they're not connected to the validator. But in this case, the validator and the user were most likely the same person. And this user was trying to bait the MEV bot into doing a sandwich attack and in a very sophisticated way, thwarted that attempt, back around their transaction and caused them to lose out on a ton of money. So here's the block that was proposed where it actually happened. Okay, this was literally just a day ago at the time recording this video. And let's get a quick detailed breakdown of exactly what happened. So again, typically a sandwich tag goes, the MEV bot pushes up the price of an asset, the user's transaction goes in to push the price more, and then the MEV bot sells for the profit, you know, just like I was showing you right here. But in this scenario, the sophisticated player acted as an unsuspecting user and baited the MEV bot in trying to front run then perform a sandwich attack. So in this case, step one, the MEV bot tries to front run the user, buys the asset and pushes up the price. Okay, that's this right here. You know, they do their initial transaction while they're trying to get it in here. But in step two, instead of the sophisticated player buying up higher, they already owned the asset the MEV bot pumped. And then they sold the asset at the higher price, bringing the asset price down at or below where the MEV bot originally purchased. And then in step three, where the MEV bot normally sells the asset, it can't happen now because the sophisticated player already sold the asset and bought it back down at the original price. And this causes the MEV bot's transaction, the one that's trying to sell, to completely revert and they're stuck holding the token they bought in step one. So this typically can't happen because transaction bundles are usually atomic and block proposers usually must take the ordering of transactions made by block builders and approve it. But this sophisticated player, who is also the block proposer in this case, reordered the transactions in the block and included a new transaction that was not inside the block that the builder originally made. So in this case, this only worked because the block proposer themselves, this person was the validator, when it was their turn to propose a block, they were able to do this. And so that's absolutely insane how this went down. I mean, this is some really high level strategy and some more information on the user who actually executed this it just looks like this was a very calculated, you know, premeditated thing that they've been thinking about for a very long time. So essentially, you know, the account that did this, again, we have all insight to this on chain. The funds were transferred anonymously to this validator recently. Okay, so they've been waiting for this to happen and they've been waiting for their turn to propose this block in order to strike this attack of the MEV bus by baiting them in and then reordering all this. And so let's talk about some of the concerns that people have in response to this, because a lot of people are worried like, hey, is this a vulnerability in the blockchain? Like, is this really going to affect other people? So the first thing you have to understand is that, you know, there's this thing called MEV boost that many validators run. OK, and there's already been a patch in MEV boost that basically prevents this type of thing from happening going forward. So in that Regard, it's not really a concern at all. But now I also want to bring up something that, you know, a lot of people aren't talking about, which is even if this was still going to go on in the future, this is not exactly the type of thing that affects normal everyday users of the chain. OK, so again, you know, I'm not a fan of things like sandwich attacks. I don't do them. I don't teach other people to do them because it really affects just honest, normal, everyday people who are trying to use the blockchain for what it's intended for. Like if I go to a token exchange and I want to swap my assets, like what I get back is should be the same as what I'm quoted on chain. And if somebody runs an MEV bot that goes and does a sandwich attack on my trade, like, like that's not cool. And so in this case, you know, the person was really attacking the person who's making a bad experience for everybody else. So it's almost like analogous to like, you know, a gang on gang crime. It's still a crime. It's still bad, but it's not the same thing as someone attacking like an everyday normal citizen who's just minding their own business. And so in that way, I don't see this as a threat to normal everyday users. And in some ways, it's also a little bit of a good thing because it means that there's risk for other MEV bots who are trying to manipulate the experience for everyday users because it introduces this level of risk that like, hey, maybe I don't want to do this because someone else could trick me who I'm trying to trick somebody else and that can have negative downside consequences. All right, so that's an overview of how this blockchain developer lost $20 million trying to run an MEV bot to front run other users and how they in turn got attacked by another validator. This is one of the craziest stories I've heard on the blockchain really in the last year. I've never seen anything like this happen. And so I make this video to share with you all about it because, you know, everybody's talking about this and it's kind of hard to understand unless you know all the moving parts involved. So I hope you like this video. You know, as always, smash that like button down below for the YouTube algorithm. Subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. That really helps these videos out so the more people learn about blockchain. And if you're as fascinated with this technology as I am and want to get your hands dirty, how can you get started today? Well, you can go to my YouTube homepage. You can find those free courses there. They're like Udemy courses, but they're totally free. And if you like those and you went to the next step or hey, Maybe you want to take a master shortcut entirely. I can show you break into the blockchain industry, increase your salary well past 100K over at dappadiversity.com forward slash bootcamp. You really don't have to be an expert to get started today. I've helped people with zero coding experience become real world blockchain developers in a matter of months. So that's all I've got. Until next time, thanks for watching Dappy Diversity.